we are in the book of Acts, we are in chapter 1, and we see how important is this book as a transition from the four Gospels to the book of Romans. Because the scriptures before Acts, the last is the Gospel of John, they all part of the prophetic program to and about Israel, the 12 tribes, and describe, especially for Gospels, the earthly ministry of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. There is no mention, no even a hint, of what is called the revelation of the mystery, the new creature, the body of Christ. Let's go and see in this book of Acts what happens and who is about, who is talking, and who, who is, uh, is the audience. All right? We let, in other words, the scriptures know the traditions of men to be the teacher. Okay? Acts 1, verse 1, The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach until the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. Okay? <clears throat> as you know, as you understand, there is no, no, there is no Paul here. Eh? Okay? To whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs being seen of them forty days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. It is so important to understand. This is Jesus and the eleven because Judas has taken his life and he showed himself alive after the resurrection because he died on that cross, he was buried, he rose again the third day as he said he would. And he's showing himself by many infallible proofs. He was the one who was talking with them, now it's reason. Being seen of them, 40 days. I mean, come on. In 40 days, they had more than one proof that Jesus was risen, he was with them, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. There is no mention of the body of Christ. We learn afterwards, we Paul, that the body of Christ was a mystery, hid in God from ages and generations, hid in God, not in the scriptures. And unle unless the Lord would have revealed to his chosen vessel, Paul, we wouldn't know anything about the body of Christ. Because the apostles of the Lord, the twelve, never talked about it, never taught about it. They are talking. In teaching the things that Christ instructed them, in fact, says, speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. What is this kingdom of God? Because everybody now in, in the denominations is preaching the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is something absolutely real. Was when the kingdom of heaven, when the kingdom of heaven comes to, on, to establish the kingdom of God on earth. We know, in the beginning God, Genesis 1.1, created the heaven and the earth. We know there are two realms, okay? And we know that, practically, there's been rebellion in heaven with Lucifer and his fallen angels. They follow him in this rebellion. And on earth, there is the, the fall uh, of Adam and Eve, of, crea of creation of mankind. So practically, we got the, the, the fact that the Lord created two, two realms, heaven and earth, has been seen a rebellion, pollution in both places. So we know that when we start studying the scriptures, we see the operation of God and how God works with this earthly nation, Israel. He creates in this nation, Israel. And, uh, you know, the rest of the Gentiles at that time could be saved through the preaching of the testimony of Israel, the law, the covenant. So if you are a Gentile, you want to worship the God of Israel, you have to proselyte 
into Israel, which was allowed. God wanted also the Gentiles to be saved. But there is nothing concerning the body of Christ. There is not even a mention, not even a hint, because it was it in God. So, God promised through the prophets this kingdom. And eventually, in due time, in the appointed time of God, Christ comes who is God, true God and true man, fully God, fully man, God incarnated. And where does he, does he go? To Israel. He's born a Jew. He's circumcised. He teaches the law. We need to understand that message, that preaching was not addressed to us as Gentiles unless we want to be saved, you know, through Israel because salvation was of the Jews at that time. Jesus said to the Samaritan woman, you know, in John 4, anyway, salvation is of the Jews. And when I was in religion, I thought, hmm, I don't understand this. Because I thought, Jesus is my Savior. But I was not even conceiving, understanding that Jesus was the Messiah, the King, the Prophet, the High Priest of Israel. And he came preaching the gospel of the kingdom that was going to be established on earth with Jesus being the king and Israel being the nations of uh, whom, uh, of which he will uh, rule over, reign over, and the rest of the world will come to the God of Israel, Jesus the king, through the preaching and the instruction, the teachings of Israel. Let's continue. <clears throat> This morning, my dear friends, my pronunciation of my English is worse than ever. I'm so sorry. But I need to preach, so I continue. <coughs> Apologies when I make mistake. You got the taxi anyway. And Acts 1 4. Being assembled together with them, so Jesus now risen 40 days with them, being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. You see, it's not Rome. It's not Berlin. But wait for what? For the promise of the Father, which says he, you have heard of me. You remember how Jesus promised they would be uh, baptized with the Holy Ghost. Who? The Twelve. And in fact, he has in Acts 1 5. For John truly baptized with water, and that was the baptism. Of repentance. Remember what John was saying. Repent, be baptized. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. The kingdom of God is here. Practically, he was introducing also the kingdom and the king. And he said to be baptized in water. Which was the ceremonial baptism to start to enter in the kingdom. Because remember, this is a kingdom of uh, kings and priests unto the world. Huh? But he shall be baptized with with the Holy Ghost. Who does the baptism with the Holy Ghost? Jesus. Because John baptized with water. Who baptized with the Holy Ghost? Holy Ghost, Holy, Ghost, Holy Spirit, same. Jesus. Okay. Verse 6. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, Will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So the question, the preoccupation of the, of the, the disciples is not concerning the salvation of the Gentiles. They want to know if he's going to restore again the kingdom to Israel. Israel was a great kingdom when the kings, in particular David and Solomon, brought it to a point of great glory, power, position. But the declension of the fall of the apostles of Israel was evident when Jesus came. He found this nation completely um, in a condition of apostasy. The devil was tormenting them. Many were possessed with devils. And people were sick of all sickness possible, imaginable. Jesus healed them all, you know. But the point is, remember that 
the promise in, in Exodus, for example, was, I'm the Lord that healed thee. If you obey, if you keep my commandment, judgment, statutes, I will not put on, on you the sick, sicknesses, disease I put on, on the Egyptian, because the, I'm the Lord that healed thee. It was conditional. There was a covenant. God, of course, on his side, <laughs> he was keeping the part of the covenant, being faithful as he is. But mankind, in this case, Israel was failing miserably. The history of Israel is a sad history of disobedience and constantly, you know, apostasy coming back. You can read this. It's an enormous amount of information there in the prophetic program. So they, they really are curious. says, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom of Israel? The answer of Christ is, he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father has put in his own power. Now, listen. He's talking to them, to Israel, to the twelve tribes, in particular, in, in this case, the representatives of the, the tribes, the apostles. But, what about now that there are there's been in the last two thousand years an army never ending of date setters they think they got special revelations they think that god spoke to them or gave them information when, about the date when he was going to come and of course they fail miserably the date setting story is such a pitiful one because it's brought a lot of uh, you know shame to the to the gospel many people say you see it's just a joke you always said jesus came jesus came jesus never came and all the ones that said before they failed yeah because they are disobedient jews and gentiles do something that god said no because hey these are the the, the apostles of the lord and the lord said unto them to a legitimate question you know he said they said Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? So you're going to be the king and we're going to be the kingdom with you? And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the times or the seasons, times or seasons, which the Father God has put in his own power. But then he gives it a very important information in news here. He said, but ye shall receive power when? after that the holy ghost is come where upon you do you understand this as i said and i apologize my english is terrible my pronunciation is horrible but what does it says here by ye who ye the, the 11 they the, the 11 then become 12 with matthias ye know us shall receive power and these people, you know, the dunamis is the power of God. So they think that we got now this power, they can go around doing the, what the, only, only the disciples could do, the apostles. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is, is come upon you. And ye shall be, ye, who? The twelve shall be witnesses unto me. Where? both in jerusalem look starts where with jerusalem where the kingdom will be established in the future from which the kingdom will be established in all judea and in samaria so these three regions jerusalem judea samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth where are the jews were scattered And when he had spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up. So imagine Jesus getting taken up and a cloud received him out of the sight. Was this an atmospheric cloud or was the cloud of glory of the Lord? That's what I believe it is. Anyway. So yeah, they are they're beholding. He's given us very serious commandments. He said, Go, you know, in Jerusalem, you know, wait for the promise of the Father. And guess what? Here they are. And when they have spoken these things, while they beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received down the side, 
Wada looked steadfastly toward heaven, you know, as he went up. So evidently he didn't go like a zoom. Maybe he was going slowly. <laughs> Looking, oh, look. Behold, two men stood by them in wide apparel. Who are these two men? They are angel in, angels. The word angel means messenger because also a man, remember the angels in the King James Bible, it's very clear. They're always men, never women. They got no wings, flapping wings, long hair, blonde hair, blue eyes, and all this. This is imagination of our flesh. But could be also the two witnesses, which we see later in the book of Revelation. A person I believe would be Moses and Elijah from the type of operation they do. That's my personal belief. Not everybody agrees, but it's fine, you know. You have a right to be wrong. That's <laughs> just kidding. Which also said those two men. Ye men of Galilee. So these guys are from Galilee, okay? Why stand ye gazing up into heaven? Like, you know, it told you to go to wait for the promise of the Father. And then they gave a very important information. This same Jesus, no, another one, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come in like manner as you see him go into heaven so those two men those those two angels witnesses as i said i believe being moses and elijah tell the disciples of the lord in this case the prof the apostles this same jesus which is taken up from you into heaven shall so come in like manner as you have seen him go into heaven. This is not the catching up of the body of Christ, which is not mentioned. Nobody knows anything in the prophetic scriptures about that. That was a mystery, part of the revelation of the mystery, revealed later to a new apostle, which is Paul, we see later. Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount of called Olivet, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey, not very far. And where they were coming, they went up into an upper room, where a boat, both Peter, James, and John, and Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the son of Alphaeus, and Simon Zelotes and Judas, the brother of James, who is missing, the one who took his life, Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed the Lord. These all cont continued with one accord <clears throat> in prayer and supplication, prayer and supplication. We find this also in the letters of Paul when he said, be careful for nothing, by in everything, by prayer and supplication, let your request may be known unto God. Remember? But also you find in the Psalms, prayer and supplication. So it must be, it must be a difference. You pray, you talk with the Lord, supplication may be you intensely expose uh, your request you, you, to the Lord in prayer. In Italian, the supplico means please do this for me, you know. You can say this to your wife, say, please make lasagna for me. And she said, no. And you say, please make it. She said, okay. <laughs> because you've been supplicato. supplicato. <sighs> what a mess. I'm Italian. I live in Australia. I have a terrible accent. My English sometimes gets really messed up. Anyway. These all continue with one accord in prayer. This is important, they were one accord, in, a, in agreement and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. Hey, this is the last time that in the scriptures 
There is mention of Mary, the mother of Jesus. Please, not the mother of God. But Jesus is God, yes, but she is the mother of Jesus, God in the flesh. Jesus the man. She is not the mother of God because God is the father of all and is God no mother. Oh, the Roman Catholic Church. Everybody's crying. But, you know, cry, cry. Better cry now and get the truth. They cry later when you are burning in hell. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brethren. What do you mean, brethren? Jesus said brother, brothers and sisters in the flesh, because Mary was not always virgin like Semper Virgo, you know, the Roman Catholic. I was born Roman Catholic, I know this kind of thing. That's actually very offensive to women and motherhood, because God bless women with the possibility of giving birth to children. It's a sacred thing to God, the motherhood. People, you know, the Roman Catholic Church goes with Babylon, with, with Semiramis. Yeah, they worship, all the, 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 you know, the Queen of Heaven, <laughs> the goddess. So the goddess, always a very good. No, she had to be a virgin. Fulfilled in Genesis 3 15 and Isaiah 7 14 because that was required because Jesus had to be born a man but could not be the seed of man. He could not be a descendant of Adam in the flesh. At that point, he was a sinner, he couldn't save us. He had to be the seed of the woman. Practically, God in the flesh without the intervention of Adam. The Holy Ghost conceived Jesus in the womb of the Virgin. After that she was no more virgin. She gave birth to brothers and sisters. They mentioned in the gospel. But once again the cults, the religions, the worship, the goddess, Mother Earth, Astart, the Queen of Heaven, Semiramis, call it the way you want. In every religion there is a, a woman with a baby. Every religion. You go and look and the woman is exalted. No, 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 no. God gives the right place to the woman, no problem about that. He gives the woman the possibility, as a promise actually, to be the mother of the Savior of the world, you know, Jesus Christ, in the flesh. But she's not exalted, she exalted. She is not a co-redeemer. That's really terrible, you know, this heresies. Christ is the redeemer, the Savior, the only one, okay? There is no other Savior but Jesus Christ, the Lord Jesus Christ. And in those days, jump, we jump in verse 15, jump. I don't know if I just proceed <laughs> this morning. And in those days, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, the impetuous Peter, and said, the number of names together were about 120. Okay. In the midst of the disciples, there were 120. And said, Men and brethren, is there Gentiles here? No. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled. All scripture gets fulfilled. In God's time, all scripture gets fulfilled. Remember, we're dealing with God and His pure words. Which the Holy Ghost, notice, by the mouth of David, spake. So it's God speaking by the mouth of David. It's God speaking by the mouth of Peter or James or John and then Paul. We don't exalt man, but the Holy Ghost is God, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost, God the Father, the Word, the Holy Ghost, these three are one. Man and bread, this creation must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost, by the mouth of David, spake concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Well, he was numbered with us, and had obtained part of this ministry. How uh, this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity. 
He says, now this man purchased a field with the reward of iniquity, the 30 pieces of silver, you know, when he betrayed the Lord. Silver. Silver talks of redemption, okay? Christ was sold with the price of a slave. That represents you and me. Slave unto Satan in this evil, present evil world. <clears throat> Mankind. Mankind. Enslaved by Satan. <clears throat> and falling headlong, he burst asunder in the midst, and all his bowels gashed out. Yeah. And it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as that field is called in the proper tongue, Ashel Dama, that is to say, the field of blood. You see, you don't need to speak uh, Hebrew. The Holy Ghost gives interpretation in English. In Italian, be il campo di sangue, the same thing. For it is written, you see, Peter doesn't come this, imagine it, for this written. Please, when you come to the things of the Lord, don't go around with your opinions, ideas. Stay with what is written and don't go beyond. Don't diminish, don't add. Stay with the Word of God. For it is written in the book of Psalms. So you see, they already had the book of Psalms. We have two, eh? Let his habitation be desolate. A land no man dwell therein, and his bishopric let another take. So he was a bishop. What do you mean, bishop? Overseer. He was an apostle. All right. Wherefore, of these men which have compared companioned with us all the time, that the Lord Jesus went in and out among us, beginning from the baptism of John. And to that same day that he was taken up from us, very clear. Must one be ordained to be a witness with us of his resurrection? In modern times, the last 2,000 years have been a plethora of people that call themselves apostles. They say, the God called me to be an apostle. They are a bunch of uninformed, no, ignorant liars and deceivers. Some are just ignorant and pretenders, but some are also very much deceivers. You have, you have to have seen the Lord Jesus to be an apostle, got to have the signs of the apostles. You know, these are part of this, but also Paul has got the signs of the apostle. God gives to them when he presents him to Israel, the new apostle. These modern ones, are dreamers and sometimes deceivers and sometimes in good faith believing because they can run to the revelation of the mystery but many of them as deceivers that's for money and power and position not to mention <laughs> apostolic church when in the world you know the roman apostolic not to mention the apostolic pentecost uh, yeah just forget it just stay with the scripture and they appointed two Joseph, called Bassabas, who was surnamed Justice, and Matthias. And they prayed and said, Thou Lord, which know the hearts of all men, what a declaration, shew whether of these two thou hast chosen. Who can choose the apostles? The Lord. No man. Okay, let's let's get together, pray, lay hands, ordain. You want to ordain what? In this dispensation, there are no more apostles, prophets, no even pastors, because in Ephesians says he gave. Now we have the, the you know the, the fulfilled word of God, and if you're saved and sealed, you got the Holy Ghost. You can read and learn without the intervention of external sources and all of a sudden they go and contradict the word of God. Go and see these apostles, self-proclaimed ones, what they teach. 100% contrary to the word of God. 
or otherwise they leave a mix that said something is good because it's easy you can mix you know nice cocktail nice soup minestrone soup and they prayed and said thou lord so they prayed the lord doesn't the lord know how to answer prayers and do the right thing according to his will of course he does he says thou lord which know the hearts of all men shew whether of these two who joseph co barsabas was the surname justice and matthias so there are two in the choice thou art chosen that he might take part of this ministry and apostleship because they need to be 12 why because there are 12 tribes of Israel no 11 from which Judas Iscariot by transgression fell that he might go to his own place which is in heaven I don't think so I don't think so he betrayed the Lord the Lord, okay, I'm sure that the Lord would have forgiven if he would ask for forgiveness. In that dispensation, you could do this. You ask for forgiveness now, God is not going to forgive you. You need to believe the gospel of Christ and then you are automatically forgiven. Don't bypass the cross now in this dispensation of grace. But anyway, he went to hell. Son of perdition. And they gave forth their lots. What is this? Because people say, oh, this is gambling. Man, it's no gambling. That was one of the ways that the Lord would speak with his people in, in, in that dispensation of the kingdom. The lots. They are, you know, to Urim and Tumin, you know. I don't know if they were a, a white, a black one, you know, element, bull, whatever it is. The point is, the, 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 the lots. They gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias. That was the answer of God. No, 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 no. Matthias was a mistake. Oh, now the Holy Ghost, now God, God the Father, Jesus, the Holy Ghost, he makes mistakes. The apostles were Paul. No! Paul is not part of the twelve. We'll see later. And he was numbered with the eleven apostles, so now they are back to twelve apostles for the twelve tribes. Thank you, Lord. Okay, we're going Acts 2 now. This is so important. Because the entire Christianity, by large, you know, thinks that this is the birthday of the Christian church. Actually, <laughs> oh man, you know, the day of Pentecost. I was Pentecost for 40 years. I know this. I was Pentecost for 40 years because I was ignorant. Man, yeah, I was ignorant as, you know, I just knew parts of the Bible which they taught me. And I just gulped in everything without going seeking and searching for myself. Bless the grace of God, I would still there be there. But and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. What is the day of Pentecost? It's one of the feasts of the Lord. Pentecost means 50, 50 days after Passover. Jesus. Now there are the feasts of the Lord. Pentecost is 50 days after Passover. Passover is when the Lamb of God was sacrificed. And 50 days from Passover would be the feast of the ingathering of first fruits. Friends, this is a Jewish feast. According to the law, no Gentiles can be there. when the day of Pentecost was fully come. This day of Pentecost is unique in history. People continue to celebrate the day of Pentecost even now, but this, what happened then, it doesn't happen anymore. What once it happened? So, <clears throat> they were all with one accord in one place. They were in, in agreement, just like at the beginning. And what happened? And suddenly, there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. So 
for you got the sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind nowadays you know I don't know <laughs> I got a wish and he filled the all the house where they were sitting and they appear unto them cloven tongues like as of fire and he sat upon each of them there are no Gentiles here I read it to you so how can you think that this is the beginning of the Christian church well, in the Christian church, there are now Gentiles in abundance. There might be some Jews, but the majority are Gentiles. Anyway. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues. Not unintelligible sounds but tongues <clears throat> languages as the spirit gave them utterance you said that this was gonna happen and they were dwelling in Jerusalem lots of Gentiles no Jews devout men out of every nation under heaven they had to go to celebrate the feast of Pentecost being Jews scattered abroad in other nations and they were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews Jews I mean it's a Jewish feast there are no Gentiles the Holy Spirit falls upon this 120 with you know this cloven tongues as a fire there is a rush mighty wind whatever it is speak to tongue speaking in tongues languages I wish I could speak in tongues perfectly but the spirit speak perfect English no I have to study <clears throat> and I'm not very good and when this was noise abroad the multitude came together and were confounded why because every man heard them speak in his own language is this what's happening in the so-called modern charismatic world of faith the Pentecostal church no it's not I was part of that I know for 40 years I know I thought I was speaking in tongues since I came to the gospel of grace I fell from me like a, a leaf from a tree because that's an invention of religion, in particular of, the, of uh, the traditions of a denomination, in this case, Pentecost denomination, which is a mess. And, we're, and they were all amazed and marvelous, saying one to another, Behold, <coughs> are not all these which speak Galileans? And now here we, every man in our own tongue, wherein in we were born I mean more clear than this is our real tongues couldn't be how here we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born like I'm Italian you are Japanese you are Australian you are French you are German imagine somebody you know this this kind of experience you hear you here in German you here in Italian you in Japanese you are wow in fact, it tells you which one. The nations. Parthians, Emites, and Elamites, and the dwellers in Mesopotamia, and in Judea, and Cappadocia, in Pontus, and Asia. It's not China. Asia, there will be the Turkey area. Phrygia, Pamphylia, Egypt. In the parts of the Lib or Libya about Cyrene and strangers of Rome, Jews and proselytes. 
So those guys from Rome, they are Jews. There were Jewish synagogues in Rome when they were scattered abroad, you know? And proselytes, people that want to become part of the people of Israel, you know? Cretes and Arabians, we do hear them speak in our own tongues the wonderful works of God. Can you imagine? This is a double miracle. Those Galileans didn't know those tongues and they start to speak as the Spirit gave them utterance and they were speaking those different tongues and those guys were re hearing in their own tongues from which where they, where they were born. So it's a double miracle. This is the reverse of the Tower of Bible. But in the context of Israel, there are no, no, no Gentiles here. And they were all amazed and were in doubt saying one to another what means this even now people say what does it mean go and read it but you go in a pentecostal church now you don't remember every other of all this noise and confusion i remember the first time i went i thought these people are crazy and unfortunately i got the bug they caught me in the net and i was crazy too Remember at that time, I was 23, I didn't know one verse of the Bible. I mean, you know, I knew uh, the, the, the prayer of Father, I knew a few things here and there, but really, I didn't know the scriptures because I was Roman Catholic. Sorry, man. You might find what I say offensive, but I better offend you to bring you the truth. They keep you in ignorance and just pat on your shoulders and just give what you want to hear. Because you got itching ears. What means this? How the Mokin says, these men are full of new wine. They think they drank, you know. But Peter, so he's the leader, okay? Standing up with the 11. No, now, you know, Peter and the 11 makes 12 because Matthias has been added. There is no Paul. Can't you see now? 11 and Peter makes 12. Paul is 13. No, it's a new apostle. It's one new apostle for one apostle for the one new creature, the body of Christ. Okay. Then there is Timotheus and Silvanus and Barnabas in the course of the growth of the, bo of the body of Christ, the new creature. Comes after, anyway. Not now. You know why people don't want to accept that uh, it's Matthias? Because they want to make a Paul an evangelist, a missionary from P for Paul, uh, for Peter, James, and John. I need another cough, you know. Maybe, maybe when I have so much information in me, I want to give all together. Mm. But Peter, standing up with eleven, lift up his voice and said unto them, "You Gentiles, no, ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words." For these are not drunken, as you suppose. See this, but the third hour of the day. But this is that which is spoken by the prophet Joel. Now, if you go and read the prophet Joel, does Joel speak to Gentiles? No. He speaks to Israel. So, Peter is speaking to Gentiles. No, he's speaking to Israel. Actually, it was scattered abroad came to Jerusalem, Israel, Israelites and proselytes. What did Joel say? And it shall come to pass in the last day, says God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and you all men shall dream dreams. This is not written to Gentiles. And all my servants, Gentile servants of God, no way, Israel. And all my unmaidens, Israel. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, in those days, which days? This is the days. But it's gonna be also in the future. In, time, in ages to come, after that, the new creature, the body of Christ, which we don't mention here, is not here. It's going to be caught up to meet the Lord in the air. That's part of the revelation of the mystery. These miracles will happen again. 
for Israel, the remnant, when the Lord's going to restore them. I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. So they. So all this prophecy stuff that's going on in those churches, modern churches, it's just Bologna, imagination, invention. I know, I was one of them. I thought I had this gift. You know why I'm not ashamed to tell you? Because I want to tell you that the grace and the mercy of God is such that all sins are forgiven, including religious sins, including, you know, getting the wrong gospel, getting the wrong dispensation, and thinking that you are an Israelite or part of Israel in some way, shape, or form. We are not. There is no Israel of God in this dispensation of grace, in Acts 9, and he was still here. And I wish you wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Stop, pull the brakes. What are you talking about, Peter? This didn't happen in that day. Hey, it's going into the future. In the great tribulation period. What had the Gentiles got to do with this? And I will show wonders in heaven above and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness. Sorry, mate. It didn't happen in that day, did it? Of course not. But see, in the contest, something is a first fruit. It's happening. Something that's going to be happening in the fullness in the future for Israel. The sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before what? The that great, that great and notable day of the Lord come. It shall come to pass in that time that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. If you call now on the name of the Lord, you're going to get saved? I dare to say no. You need to believe the gospel of the cross. And receive it by grace through faith. It's nothing to do with your works. I called on the name of the Lord. I did, you know. That's why he saved me. No. <clears throat> you can say, I heard the gospel. How the Christ died for my sins according to the scriptures. And he was buried. And that he rose again the third day according to the scriptures. I heard the gospel, the Christ was delivered from my offenses, risen again for my justification. I heard the gospel that Christ gave himself for our sins, that he might deliver us from this present evil world according to the will of God and our Father. I heard the gospel that says, salvation is by grace through faith, and other works is a free gift of God to anyone, the gift of God to anyone who believes, to Jew first and also the Greek. Paul later in Romans 1.16 says, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There is nothing to do with this. For it is the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes to Jew first and also the Greek. But this is in the context of the prophetic program that will continue after we get caught up to meet the Lord in the air and shall come to pass in that that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Ye men of Israel. Oh, more clear than this. Ye men of Israel. Hear these words, Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs. The Jews require a sign, remember? The Greeks look for wisdom, philosophy. But we preach Christ crucified. Now the body of Christ is preaching Christ crucified. Which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know him being delivered by the determined counsel and foreknowledge of God. He didn't, he didn't take God by surprise. He had taken and by wicked hands a crucified and slain. Is this the way that the Apostle Paul preaches the cross? No. <laughs> we glory in the cross. Thank you, Lord, that Jesus Christ was crucified. He died. He was buried. He rose again. So I can be saved. Me, good for nothing. Me, Gentile. Oh, also Jew, because now God, you know, after the fall of Israel, it happens in the book of Acts. God has put all on the scene. See, you know, Jews and Gentiles, so he might have mercy upon all. Paul explains this, not Peter. Oh, you know, you are taken by weak hands and crucified and slain. 
That's a murder indictment. Whom God has raised up and will lose the pains of death because it was not possible he should be holden of it. For David speaks concerning him. I foresaw the Lord of West. Oh, prophecy, man. It's beautiful. It's wonderful. It's fulfilling prophecies in part because the rest will be fulfilled in the future. But what happened has happened, you know. For David speaks concerning him. I foresaw the Lord of West before my face, for he is on my right hand. I should not be moved. Therefore did my heart rejoice and my tongue was glad. Moreover, also my flesh shall rest in hope. Because thou wilt not leave my soul in hell, neither wilt thou suffer thine holy one to see corruption. Who is this holy one? It's Jesus. Jesus was resurrected on the third day. Corruption begins on the fourth. Remember Lazarus? Oh Lord, you know, it's four days is going to stink now. Now Jesus, thou hast made known to me the ways of life. Thou shalt make me full of joy with thy countenance. Now David is the king through the loins of David comes according to the flesh. See the David Christ, which is God. Men and brethren, let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David. There is both dead and buried, and his sepulchre is with us unto this day. Therefore, being a prophet and knowing that God has sown with an oath to him that of the fruit of his loins, according to the flesh, he will raise up Christ to sit on his throne. He, seeing this before, spake of the resurrection of Christ, that his soul was not left in hell, neither his flesh did see corruption. Jesus got to hell. He was a sinner. No! <laughs> For he, God, made him to be seen for us who knew no sin, that we might be made of righteousness of God in him. All this happened to save ungodly sinners, enemies of God, among the Jews and among us Gentiles. But Peter is not preaching this. Peter is in the context of the preaching of the kingdom to and exclusively Israel. Peter will not preach to Gentiles in this case. This Jesus God raised up. Whereof we are all witnesses. Israel. Therefore being by the right hand of God exalted. And having received of the Father the promise of the Holy Ghost. He has shed forth this which you now see and hear. But well, David is not ascending into heaven, in, into the heavens. Oh, I got to be careful when I read. For David is not ascend into the heavens. There is only heaven. There are three heavens. But he says himself, the Lord, the Lord, that's the name of God in the Old Testament, which we cannot pronounce, the Tetragrammon, said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. Until I make the foot the footstool. Therefore, let all the eyes of Israel. There are no Jews here, man. I got to say this because now the Gentiles, th th there are no Gentiles here, they're all Jews. Because the modern Gentiles think, ah, oh, that's for us, that's for us, let's go through this experience. And they've tried to recreate this. They call revival, okay. I was there, I know. It's guilty doing this myself. Therefore, let all the eyes of Israel know assuredly that God has made the same Jesus whom ye have crucified, both Lord and Christ. Guess what? You crucify the Lord. <laughs> now, when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles. Paul is not there, is he? The rest of the apostles, they are the twelve, not the two with Paul. Men and brethren, what shall we do? Don't worry, just believe and receive the, the gospel of the cross. No. Continuous dispensation of the kingdom and the preaching of John the Baptist, of Jesus, of the twelve during the, his earthly ministry. Now even that is ascended, then Peter said to them, Repent. 
which means change your mind and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins remission of sins we receive total forgiveness immediately and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost let's see now for the promises unto you who is this you? Gentiles? no Israel and to your children which children? my children your children Gentiles? no children of Israel and to all that are far off in the future as even as many as the Lord our God shall call and with many other words did it testify and exhort saying save yourselves from this untoward generation untoward when you know corrupt unbelieving then they that gladly received his word were baptized what, what kind of baptism? in water and the same day they were added unto them about three thousand souls and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine which apostles the twelve so what kind of doctrine is that the same doctrine that jesus taught them and then you will see again in first second peter you say in james in jude in first second third john and in the book of revelation that's not what the lord revealed later to paul and they continue steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles as god said jesus said what, what happened and all that they believed were together and all things in common this is not happening now so people want to be this but not do this what is mine is mine and what is yours is also mine <laughs> But these guys sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had need. You know that Karl Marx took inspiration for his communist doctrine from this. And they continued daily with one accord in the temple. Where? In the temple. It was still there. It's going to be destroyed in the year 70. And breaking bread from house to house, they did they meet with gladness as singles of heart praising god and having favor with all the people which people people of israel and the lord added to the church what church is this the jerusalem church the scripture there are three churches the church in the wilderness with moses the jerusalem church with jesus and now with the 12 and then there is the church which is the revelation of the mystery which is the body of christ which has been revealed to Paul and is not this church Paul is not here we are not part of this so whoever goes behind the pulpit and call himself apostle prophet reverend whatever and starts to preach that this to you now and so you got to come forward we're gonna lay hands on you we're gonna pray you're gonna jump in the water and then you try to speak in tongues or whatever it is and start fighting and everything it's gonna put you under a doctrine that is not to and about you and actually it's gonna put you under the curse of the law praising God and having favor with all the people and the Lord added to the church daily such as should be saved and that's enough for today Pentecost the day of Pentecost written in Acts 2 is not the birthday of the church the church begins with a saving and calling and commissioning of the apostle paul in acts 9 so from acts 9 till the catching up of the church the body of christ the new creature the revelation of the mystery but here we got the jerusalem church which will reign in the future with christ on earth when he's going to restore the nation because since the fall of israel in acts there is no israel of god on earth oh yeah there are jews in israel you know there are people that uh, eventually if the Lord comes now you know there will be uh, part of this but the point is <laughs> if you are a Jew or a Gentile now makes no difference you're a sinner we all are ungodly sinners enemies of God in the flesh 
there is no way in the world we can save ourselves through this system or by you know fasting and praying giving your money to the church or you know seeking the face of God in prayer like if you are David or, or a prophet you need to understand you're a sinner and Jesus Christ is the Savior and you need to simply believe receive the gospel of the cross when you do that when you believe other Christ died for our sins according to the scriptures and they was buried rose again third day according to the scriptures when you believe that the gospel of Christ is the power of God unto salvation to for everyone who believes no works just simply faith in what is accomplished God saves you and seals you with the Holy Spirit the promise Ephesians 1 13 until the day of redemption of the precious possession unto the praise of his glory that's it grace and peace to all and thank you for your patience.